This is presentation number three in the genetic urinary imaging series prepared by Prof. Mahmoud Sharaf to be dealing with obstruction and infection. <coughs> this is the appearance of what we call mild hydronephrosis or mild hydroureter or, or to, com to include both so it is mild hydro ureteral nephrosis now there is definite delay in excretion as compared to the right and the delay in excretion can be manifested by two things the incomplete filling of the collecting system not like that one and number two the decreased biographic density and number three which is to be noticed in earlier films is the increased nephrographic density so if you compare the nephrographic density here with the nephrographic density of the right kidney here it is more the bilogographic density is less and there is incomplete filling of the uh, uh, left ureter although this is not assigned to uh, stress on but what we can stress on is the presence of dilatation along through the left ureter down to its terminal end where a defect is seen and this could be a small lucid stone. So, delay in uh, uh, excretion, increased the nephrographic density, decreased biographic density are all expressions to be used to denote that there is something wrong here, there is some delay and some delay with some dilatation and the dilatation is evident here so what are the grades of dilatation again we describe it in GU2 but we we'll summarize it here if you look to a calyx any of these minor calyces here there is rounding of the furnaces the furnaces are not sharp like here there is rounding of the furnaces and there is flat calyces and there is clubbed calyces clubbed means somewhat bulge but there is no much dilatation of the minor calyces compared to the normal so number one is the rounding of the furnaces and flattening of the calyces and the clapping these are all for mild hydronephrosis. Number two, if you find the calyces are dilated, like here, major calyces start to dilate here. The minor are not so much dilated, but the major calyces, like that one here and there, compared to that side, they are definitely dilated. And the pelvis compared to the other side is dilated with sagging of, of its inferior margin. And the ureter, it of course, is dilated as it compared as it's compared to because it is increased in uh, diameter more than five millimeter. And this is a sign of dilatation. And the other sign is that it is filled with contrast all through. These are the changes that can occur in obstruction. Moreover, if the minor calyces are obstructed, they might increase in size, of course, up to one centimeter, one to two centimeter, and, and more than two centimeter. If it is only one centimeter, it is called moderate. If it is one to two, it's called severe. But if it is more than that, it's called advanced or uh, late stage. What is a nephrogram? The nephrogram, of course, is due to contrast running within afferent arterioles 
glomeruli and efferent arterioles as well as the small collecting excretory renal tubules but not the collecting tubules so it results in such an appearance nephrographic phase and if you compare this nephrographic phase with this one this is persistent persistent nephrographic phase among the causes is number one is due to obstruction if bilateral it is due to hypotension so consider bilateral resistant nephrogram and consider unilateral resistant nephrogram in obstruction so this is obstruction here we have the right ureter at insertion vasoureteric junction calculus it's called vasoureteric junction calculus here we have the increased nephrographic phase on the left side with the stone denoting that there is some obstruction at the pelvic junction here there is a stone at the along the course of the ureter or down no it is down here because the ureter is showing hold up hold up contrast along its whole course so it is not only this area but all the whole course of the ureter down here is showing hold up and the stone is there so this is a stone terminal end of the left ureter with hold up of contrast and here another case of hold up of, left, uh, of contrast along the left ureter down there and this is due to small stone at the terminal end of left ureter because of faults in the proximal segment of the ureter without obstruction this is frequent seen as normal anatomic variant and this is probably due to residue of normal fetal ureteral tortuosity and mucosal folding but similar faults antitrust may be seen in pelvic uh, arterial junction obstruction as this one so this is a fold because of fold which is denoting pelvic arterial junction obstruction and here there is a fold denoting that there is some obstruction on that side these are bilateral pelvic arterial junction obstruction but sometimes we can see such faults without obstruction now one of the first signs to occur in obstruction is stranding stranding can occur around the kidney and stranding can occur around the ureter around the kidney expect that stranding is will be not only within the rotor fascia but may extend into the pararenal fat and here some stranding is also surrounding the left ureter this denotes that the obstruction is down This is what we call the tissue rim sign. Tissue rim sign means tissue of the ureter around the stone. That means that stone is within the ureter. It's called the tissue rim sign, seen in the axial and in the coronal mid ureteric stone with tissue rim sign. Flebulus, no tissue rim sign. This is a flebulus without ureter. There is no tissue rim size like this one, this one if you look here there is tissue around and if you look here there is tissue around faint tissue around but in this one there is no tissue around it is a flibus no tissue rim sign hydrofluosis this is the late stage the stage of rims and decrescence 
rims and crescents where the calyces are converted into big sacs of urine connected to each other and connected to the pelvis and here is the ultrasound of moderate hard nephrosis where the calyces is about 1 to 2 cm in diameter and here a uh, uh, ultrasound for late stage hard nephrosis where the kidney is converted into very thin parenchymal rim Reflux nephropathy may result in such appearance that is flattened calyces, rounding of the fornices, mild clapping, this is all mild hydromorphotic changes, could be due to reflux nephropathy, but mind you, such an appearance could be seen in papillary necrosis. Acute perionephrites. This is inflammation of the renal parenchyma and renal pelvis, often second to an ascending lower urinary tract infection from the gram negative bacteria E. coli, Klebsiella, Proteus, Pseudomonas, vasicoureteral reflux, and obstruction is an initiator. Complications abscess formation, emphysematous pyelonephrites in diabetics, reducing gas in the collecting system and in the renal parenchyma. This is the emphysematous pyelonephrites. What to find? Enlarged kidneys, kidneys will be swollen, maybe hydronephrosis, wedge of low attenuation, secondary decreased perfusion, undifferentiated corticomodary border, and perinephric stranding. So if you look here, wedge of low attenuation, wedge of low attenuation, wedge of low attenuation, wedge of low attenuation, perirenal stranding that means that we are dealing with and the kidney is somewhat swollen that means that we are dealing with the pyelonephrites acute pyelonephrites we know now the bacteria we know how the, with what is the root of infection the complications of such infections in diabetics and uh, uh, other changes Renal abscess formation, that's a formation of uh, an abscess with surrounding renal parenchymal involvement and renal and perirenal stranding, abscess with perirenal stranding, abscess with perirenal stranding, large abscess with perirenal edema, that is the appearance of a renal abscess. Sometimes we, we have a renal and perirenal abscess as well. This is a perirenal abscess involving the psoas muscle and the paravertebral muscles here and extending to and rest on the costal surface. This result in bulge of the soft tissue of the muscles here and stranding around. It is due to perirenal abscess with acute pyelonephrites. This is the appearance of emphysematous pyelonephritis where gas is formed both within the renal parenchyma and within the calyces. Sometimes you find it within the calyces and sometimes you find it within the renal parenchyma or perirenal. So this is the appearance of emphysematous pyelonephritis. Of course, the best to see is the soft tissue window. Here it is, emphysematous bladder. Emphysematous pyelonephritis is occurring in immunocompromised diabetics with urethral obstruction. Type 1 in 33%, type 2 in 66%. Streaky or motile gas in interstitium, radiating from the amygdala to the cortex, involving both the kidney and the perinephric tissue extending into the rota fascia and into retroperitoneal space with occasional gas in the renal veins. No fluid collections usually and the prognosis is poor. 
in the other type which is in type 2 bubbly and or liquidated intergas renal or perirenal fluid collection and physiomatous bilitis which is gas in the collecting system but not in the parenchyma and these have less grave prognosis so the difference is the gas in the, t in the renal tissue the gas is in the pelvis the gas extends into perirenal and pararenal regions the gas is not extending no fluid collection there is some fluid collection behaving as pus so this second type is less grave then sucralinitis perinephritis is a calculus calculus plus hydronephrosis plus inflammatory reaction and streaky perirenal fat streaky perirenal fat denoting infection abs uh, stone formation and hydronephrosis so the triad of calculus hydronephrosis and inflammatory reaction compose this uh, the diagnosis of denso granulomatous pyelonephritis in chronic pyelonephritis you will, you will get many things the key point and the start point is the scar formation scar formation means that the renal parenchyma opposite, opposite to a calyx is definitely reduced and the calyx at this region is definitely dilated this compromises the two sides of the scar the scar pulled on the calyx and pulled on the renal surface so we have an irregularity of the outline so if you know these two facts about the calyx and the surface you can arrange the criteria of chronic bilinephrites as following a small kidney with irregular outline and irregular telecell uh, dilatation and of course consequently the function will be decreased so of decreased parenchymal uh, bilinephraic density and delayed excretion this is a scar there should be space between a papel uh, the minor calyx and the surface here, here there is no space here there is no space there is irregularity of the parenchyma there is irregularity of the parenchyma reaching to the calyx irregular calyces irregular outline small size and decreased function bioerythritis cystica bioerythritis cystica is famous disease occurring in two main conditions the first is TB the second is uh, so pyelorethritis cystica is and uh, you know is always denotes either bilharzias or tuberculosis renal TB of course you should know that renal TB starts in the glomeruli and the renal TB starting in the glomeruli will carry the caseous material into the tips of pyramid which, which is the start point to see in IVU as fraying so fraying of the tip of the calyx or irregularity of a calyx is the first sign in TB kidneys and renal TB then after a while the draining tubule will be blocked by caseous material and this area will be converted into a non-functioning area and this non-functioning area like here lower pole here is not functioning compared to the upper and this is called auto nephrectomy and then after auto nephrectomy this will be subjected to deposition of calcium as a dystrophic calcification and resulted in one we call the camulus cloud and in camulus cloud remember that this is the workless process and it can extend into the ureter in urethritis as urethritis cyst can so fraying of the calyx is the first autonephrectomy is second camulus cloud is third Urethritis cystica is fourth, 
criteria is the first criteria for renal TB. So what is this? Renal TB may or may not be associated with psoas abscess, and psoas abscess will appear as a convex bulge of the psoas muscle, which is swollen, showing low density inside. These are the appearances of uh, psoas uh, shadow in the in psoas abscess. Here we have the whole kidney is hypnephrotic like a bag of pus because of the obstructed pelvic junction due to cases material and here is the parts which are appear non contrastive denoting death or non perfused denoting non denoting the that these parts are the sites of auto nephrectomy with calcific calcification at the parenchyma. Bilharziasis, you can find such an appearance, dilated ureters, calcific, with calcifications, and this calcification extend to involve the whole ureter, and uranium bladder calcification can appear like if it is collapsed, but if it is not collapsed and full, you might see a ring of calcification surrounding the contained fluid. This is the appearance of chronic cystitis, which can occur in TB and will heart diseases, markedly second, granular, and some gross appearance. This is the appearance of diverticuli of the bladder in neurogenic bladder. This is a castor, and these are the diverticuli. This is the appearance of emphysematous cystitis which can occur in gas in the wall and gas in the lumen in the lumen and in the wall and this is hemorrhagic cystitis where you can find uh, cyst, uh, the, the bladder wall is markedly thickened and the bladder is of limited capacity chronic cystitis diverticular Physimetous cystitis, hemorrhagic cystitis, all are appearances of uh, uh, the bladder in disease. This one is showing a vaginal indentation, could be due to vaginal mass, and this one is due to prostatic indentation and is trabeculated, showing multiple small diverticular pouches along the lumen. And the bladder, if you imagine the lower margin of the bladder, you'll find that the bladder base is markedly elevated. And this markedly elevated bladder is due to the large prostate replacing this area. If there is obstruction, there might, there might be an association of acute pyelitis or pyelonephritis. And as we said, the kidney will be swollen, and wedge-shaped areas of lower areas of under perfusion will be seen, and the dilated pelvis will be seen like that. There is delay of the nephrographic phase, definitely, and delayed excretion. And here is a stone. Uh, we have the wedge areas of reduced renal enhancement plus uh, the vasico ureteric junction stone. What it is, this is bilharziasis of the bladder, bladder calcification, which is exposed to carcinoma. Thank you.